Good morning, gorgeousities. Comment allez-vous? I hope you're all well. Um, I've still got my little bit of a sniffle going on. Grr, annoying, boring. So please excuse me if I occasionally sniff while we're out in the garden today. <clears throat> it's also runny nose making weather. It's actually quite blowy out there. I didn't realise it's going to be so blowy. We may have sound issues. Um, and it's really quite mild. It's going to be around about, the temperature's going to climb a little bit, but it's going to be around the sort of high teens today, which is mid-60s Fahrenheit, so not at all cold. And actually, just walking down here, I think I had too many layers on. I had my hoodie as well. And I was kind of like making like the Tour de France, you know, and they're kind of doing the mountain stages, oh, grinding up the mountains, and they whoop, unzip their tops, get a little bit of air in. And then they, they peak, and just before they start the descent, they whoop, whip their tops, zip their tops back up again. I've been like that on the way here. Zip down, oh no, too chilly, zip up, oh too hot, zip down. Anyway, it's a clear, mild day, so it's perfect for getting on with some gardening. I don't know how much I'll get done, because I do still feel really slow and floppy, but ready to crack into things. I think in one of the last videos I was mentioning that we did have, they were forecasting a whole week of rain this week. And I was thinking, oh for goodness sakes, which is why I tried to get a wriggle on last week with the garlic broad bean plantings, etc, etc. Actually, this week it's changed again. So it does look like, oh sorry Rusty, cats everywhere. It does look like we're going to have a couple of rain days this week, but not today. So, yes, it's time to start the big autumn fall clean-up. And what I did last night, um, I was mentioning the other day how I really, really want to see if I can wrap the garden up earlier this year. And not in terms of, so anyone who's watched my videos for a while will know, I garden right through the year, we have such a mild climate, um, hence, you know, all those things like the brassicas, parsnips, carrots, <laughs> uh, they'll go right through the winter. So I will be here at least once a week throughout the whole winter, if for no other reason than to harvest, to do my weekly shop in the garden. Um, you know, what I mean when I'm talking about sort of wrapping things up is all the beds which will be fallow until next spring, in other words, empty of any kind of crops, I like to get them covered. So what I'll do for each bed is whatever's in that bed, in terms of plant material, will get chopped up and left on the top of the bed. If there's not much, I'll add to it from the compost bin, from leaves that I rake up, what have you, get them covered in cardboard. The, the reason I want to get it done earlier this year is to beat the winter rain. So just quickly, I think, to say, last year, there were a couple of issues, and then the beginning of this year, a big issue, which made getting all my beds ready for sowing this year was just the most hideous and mammoth task. Because... Um, Quite a few people had said to me last year, and I should have stuck with my own instinct, I'm not blaming anyone, but loads of people said to me, at the end of the autumn, when you take your plants out, don't dig the beds, just put everything on top, sort of walk away and then come back in the spring. That just doesn't work in my garden, I've decided, because throughout the course of the summer and the autumn, the soil does compact a bit again and what I'd done the previous year which is what seemed to work for me is at this stage where I'm taking the plants out is to give the top of the soil a bit of a tickle. I'm not talking about doing a massive dig because I really am trying to leave the soil and the soil structure alone as much as possible. I want to leave it alone but I also want to be able to work it. So what I'd done two years ago was plants come out and then maybe two three inches on the top just with that kind of tickly flicky action with the fork just to break it up a little bit then put the compost on 
I didn't do that last year, which didn't help. And then I think the big issue was that from March, sort of March and April, I, I generally start most of the bed prep in May, but throughout March and April, we were in drought already. So, I mean, the ground had just, it is set, set so hard. It was utterly miserable to prepare. So two things this year that I'm going to do a bit differently. I'm going to go back to my site tickle of the beds, get it done earlier so that I don't have that. Because what had happened last year was not getting the beds covered till say the end of November. They'd already been pelted with rain and that had compacted them. I then also didn't tickle them. So come March, that compacted stuff set hard. So give them a bit of a tickle, get it done before the rain really starts in November. Um, and then the other thing I'm going to do differently this year is previously, sorry this is a bit wordy before we go out there um, and I would prefer to be talking out there in situ but it's so windy. Previously at, at this stage in the year you know where I've got my bean arches, so they go either side of the paths in the ends of beds. Those little ends of beds, I make a trench, move the soil away, and then throughout the sort of autumn, winter and early spring, I put all my garden rubbish in those trenches. So, manky cabbage leaves as they die back, weeds, annual weeds, um, cardboard, newspaper, whatever goes into those trenches. Uh, because that all helps to retain moisture so that then come the spring drag the soil back over those trenches plant my beans they've got their roots into some good organic matter however last not last year this year this last spring just gone again where I'd got those trenches open they absolutely set like concrete horrible so i'm not going to have open exposed trenches at all this winter literally all the soil in my beds is going to be covered and protected plus composted and mulched and all that they're all going to be completely covered then <laughs> this is the plan come next sort of March, April, when I start to think about prepping those areas of the beans or even into the beginning of May. Um, beans tend to go in a bit later, sort of like May. They really want warm soil to go into. They do not like cold soil. So when I'm thinking ahead to getting the trenches, the bean bits ready, simply I'll quickly dig a trench. And then what the plan is, is all the brassicas, which will be over by then, all those chunky brassica stalks, I'm going to chop, 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 chop them up, just into little sort of two, three inch lengths, whatever, dump those in the bottom of all the bean trenches down either side, cover them over with soil, plant my beans. There are two reasons I'm going to do that. Well, there are two thoughts that triggered me thinking about doing that. One was tackling the trenches earlier this year when they'd set to concrete and it, like I say it was, just, it was so vile and hideous. If you remember at the beginning of May it was all looking so grim um, I had reconciled myself to having half of the garden closed this year because I just couldn't manage this concrete. Um, so that made me think okay I'm not going to do trenches over this winter in case in 2021 in March we have a drought. Now you see normally March, April and May are quite wet months for us. It's highly unusual for us to have drought from the beginning of March but maybe that's the way things are going. So that triggered that thought and then later on if you remember I tipped out my one of my mini hugu cultures to repot the one of the blueberries from Richard and Paul. When I tipped it out and had a look, the brassica stalks had completely disappeared. They completely composted down and had gorgeous rich compost in the bottom of the hugel cultures. So I thought, oh, 
you see it's always an issue isn't it to get rid of our brassica stalks because they're such chunky beasts and what have you so i thought oh why not do it for the bean trenches in 2021 so there we go that kind of thinking went on the bottom line is everything i'm doing now i'm trying to prepare to make next year considerably easier than this year because i can't for one i can't afford to spend that kind of time that i spent this year i was mentioning the other day it was taking me four or six hours to prep one bed just one bed there are 20 beds out there i i basically spent the whole of may just getting the beds and the soil ready i don't have that kind of time you know that time needs to be divided between the garden and sewing <clears throat> and other things <clears throat> yeah so everything i'm doing at the moment is to try to make things a bit better for next year not just in terms of time but on me physically because it really you know it really hurt a lot um I, I probably mentioned it a bit at the time, but maybe not quite as, <laughs> quite how bad it was. But yeah, it was really bad. I'd walk home, I'd be walking home having tackled each bed. And I don't want to get upset thinking about it now, but I was literally walking home in tears every time from just this, just mind numbing pain. And then of course, you know, the rest of the evening was really unproductive because I was in so much pain. I can't afford to let that happen again. So, hence, getting a wriggle on and I'm really, really going to push to try to get all of this done by the end of October. Eek! Oh, cats. Listen, don't be fighting behind me and scratching my backside. Thank you very much. Um, so, I think I've got... I think I've got about 10 days of October left. Let's see if we can do it. So the other thing I did last night, I wrote myself a long, long list, a long list. And what I've done is I've gone bed by bed. So my four main beds, bed number five is the herb bed. And then number six is the deck. Number seven is the shed and other stuff. Great long list, quite detailed, brilliant. It gives me a really clear idea of what needs doing. I'll start doing it in a minute. I know, I'm sorry, this is really wordy to start a video, isn't it? But just trying to explain my rationale for why I do things. Because that's the thing with gardening, isn't it? I think um, it's... You're purring really loudly, boy. <laughs> Can you hear him? Um, I think that that's one of the main things with gardening is, you know, observe what's going on observe what's happened think about why something has happened you know if if something has failed think about all the different factors you know watering the soil preparation fertilizing all those different things is there something you could improve on next year so for me you are so loud today That is the weirdest part as well, isn't it? Oh, I do love you so much. You're like a blimmin' train going through a tunnel, Rusty. Um, yeah, it's 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 that thing, isn't it, all the time of, of reflecting, analysing, trying to think about why, you know, and also why things work. If something's worked really well for you this year, what was it? Did you do something different this year to make it work? Um, for me, mostly it's about thinking about when things don't work too well. Yeah. Don't be afraid to change the way you do things, you know, even if you've done something the same way for four or five years and it's always worked, you know, there might be a better way. Yeah, just be prepared. So I'm definitely be being prepared this year to change the way I do my bean trenches. Also, just to say, oh, I still haven't done my onions. Gradually, the lavender is going home. I think I've got nine bags left in here to take home. Need to bag up the onions because the flint corn will need this soon. What's the... Oh, dear. Little fur ball. You are such a noisy boy. Are you all right? Are you distressed? 
No, I don't think he's distressed. He doesn't look it. Um, lost my train of thought. These blooming cats. Yes, just as I was leaving the other day, my gorgeous neighbour Catherine said, Do you want some flowers, Vivi? I was like, ooh, what are you pulling out this time? Um, so a lot of her garden, it's sort of, a lot of the ground cover is, so for instance, the Douglasii limnanthus, the poached egg plant that I have came from her. She's kind of got it everywhere. It's lovely. She leaves everything and then when she needs a planting space, she just yanks them out by the handful. <laughs> they just, they'll keep coming back, they're fine. So she was having a bit of a yank out session. I've got my crib sheet here. I know the common name. I do know it by the common name, but I've written down the proper name because I wouldn't remember it otherwise. So she'd got a few of these little sort of seedlings and was pulling them out. And I said, oh yes, thank you so much. And then I said, oh, I'll, I'll just leave them on my table for now because I'm done in, my knees are hurting, I think I'm going to go home. And she said, oh, I'll plant them for you. So she's even planted them, bless her. She said, where do you want them? In your flowery bit? <laughs> I was like, yeah. So I don't know where she's planted them, so I need to go and have a look in a second. But they are called, it's something called Serinthi Major Purpur something or other. I forgot to write the purpur bit down. Honeywort. The bees love it. So, and they've got a lovely sort of purpley blue um, flower. So I was thinking that would be lovely amongst all the, the, the yellow and white of the poached egg. There's a little bit of blue comes through that with the love in a mist. So to have this purpley blue as well of honeywort, fantastic. Right, that's been a lot of chat to start the video. Um, I just want, yeah, I think it's I think it's useful, especially for newer gardeners, if if I explain why I do things. Yeah, that's just going back to that thing about reflecting on what's worked and what's not worked. I'm explaining why I do things because, you know, literally everything I do in the garden, there's a reason for doing it a particular way. I don't just do stuff ad hoc. I don't just do stuff because, oh, I saw someone else doing it, so I'll do it. Literally, it's all been thought about, it's been rationalised, it's been analysed. <laughs> I do have quite an, 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 an analytical brain, <laughs> that's hard to say, an analytical brain. Um, so yeah, of course, nature has her own ideas, doesn't she? So no matter how much I plan, analyse, rationalise, she'll come along and give me a great big slap in the face and tell me not to get so blimmin' arrogant about things. Anyway, yes, there's always a reason. But never mind that. Let's start. Ah, oh, and also just to say, I'm so sorry. Um, the other day, when was I? I was chopping my tomatoes, wasn't I? Making space for the direct sown broad beans out in the bed. Um, I was saying how I reckoned it would take me a couple of days to oh, interlope a cat. I was saying it was probably going to take me a couple of days to get all my structures down and all the material chopped and my beds covered. <laughs> that was a bit of an underestimation. I did the, ex the other tomato bed, chopped, dropped, covered. It was about two hours. One bed, two hours. I've got ten beds to give that treatment to. That's twenty hours. Never mind any of the structures. <laughs> yeah, I think two days was a little bit... <laughs> Who is making that caterwauling noise? So I think it's probably more like four or five or six or seven. It's not going to get done unless I start doing it, is it? So I really am going to shut up now and get us all out into the garden and start the big autumn clean-up. I'm back <laughs> before we've even been in the garden. Um, oh my goodness, splitting up a cat fight. There's a, there's a really mean looking cat that lives way up there and uh, it's been trying to kind of take over the territory of my shed. It's not allowed. Anyway, so... Um, he started to attack our rusty. I'm not having it. <laughs> I waded in there with a broom. I'm not going to put my bare arms into the middle of a cat fight. But anyway, managed to separate them. Good. Um, 
Also, I keep forgetting to mention this. Do you remember our lovely feral friend George? Sort of mostly white with spotches of ginger. Looks like a very close cousin of Rusty. I haven't seen him for ages. I haven't seen him for weeks and weeks now. Not since back in the summer, sort of June or so time. And I bumped into my neighbour Kay, or Kay came over the other day with her kittens to exercise them. And the last either of us had seen of George, he was sunbathing on her garden shed and she'd sent me a photograph of him. She's not seen him either since. <sighs> Don't know what's happened to him. I hope nothing horrid. We were both saying what we hope has happened is that basically someone's feeding him and has sort of adopted him. Let's hope. Anyway, one of the reasons for turning the camera back on in here, not out in the garden, is I realised I've just chatted on for ages about my sort of plans for the garden and my rationale and everything. Because I've gone on so long, if I now go and do everything in the garden, it's going to be a mammoth video which I don't want to impose on anyone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just wrap this up here for today and it can be its own separate little video. Like I say, it's sort of my plans and my rationale, basically. Maybe that's what it'll be called. Doesn't matter which. So I'm going to say cheerio to you all for now. Um, I hope you're getting to enjoy some garden time. If you're at that stage where your garden is all closed up and will be closed up for the entire winter, I hope you're having fun sort of daydreaming and planning for next year. It's never too soon to start planning. Um, and if you guys are anything like me, I'm sure, hey Poppy, those noisy boys, eh? Um, yeah, if you're anything like me, I'm sure you'll come up with a plan on paper and change it. <laughs> five, six, seven, eight times before you actually put things into action next year. So yeah, if you can't be in your gardens, daydream and plan for next year. So for now, cheerio, but I'll see you again really soon because we will actually get into the garden. Bye for now.